Thanks, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. Our next guest you can see on Arrow. You can see her this year in the incredible success Black Panther. But most importantly, you can see our next guest, Sidel Noel, in Glow, Netflix's amazing show about a band of female wrestlers. Let's take a look at a clip. Of course. Uh, congratulations. You had a pretty big year this year. I did. I did. And it's been overwhelming, but beautiful. <laughs> How long ago did you shoot Black Panther? We shot it last year. Um, I flew out January 4th and I was out there for four months. In really? Atlanta. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What was that like? In Atlanta, that's so funny. I know Wakanda was in Atlanta, guys. Sorry, uh, but yeah, it was it was um, it was a lot. Uh, we had we were shooting fourteen, sometimes sixteen hour days, um, literally getting up at four o'clock in the morning. Not even getting up, sorry, getting up around like three o'clock in the morning to be in the makeup chair at four a.m. and getting your head shaven and and then being in that makeup trailer and for like three hours sometimes, and then that costume that the doors that we had on was kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> it actually, the first time we actually put it on, it was too tight. We couldn't fight in it. <laughs> and then they had to loosen it up for us. But it was a, it was a lot. It was a lot that we went through. But I, I, me, myself, and I'm sure everybody else, we are satisfied with how everybody oh reacted God. from yeah. it. Yeah, I'm glad so many people loved it and enjoyed it. And we broke all these records. I am just Unbelievable, I'm so right? humbled. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, then, you know, what, whatever came out, like, a, oh, Infinity War came out a few weeks later and broke <laughs> and all like, the records again. Like, yeah, like, it was so funny. But it's still, it's still, I'm, I'm just happy that we actually made history because, yeah. seriously, Marvel never did an all-black action hero movie before. And to do that, well, mostly, we still had a sprinkle of Lord of the Rings in there. But, yeah, that's what I say. I say there's a sprinkle of Lord of the Rings. But, yeah, yeah. Um, They've never done that before. So to be part of that history-making film, I'm just so humbled and I, I'm honored. All right, let's talk about Glow season two as much as we can. Uh, I love Glow. Like, I'm a diehard fan of this show. Really? When it came out last year, um, I didn't know much about it. I knew people were, res critics were saying it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I sat down on like a Friday night, you know? I don't like to go out on Friday nights. I'm a kind of a loser. Uh, <laughs> I'm tired. I like to watch TV. That's like my TV it's night. Okay, you like the couch. I like the couch too. Nothing well, it's wrong the night that. where I get to watch something of my own choosing eventually, because I'm usually watching stuff for this. And so I put on Glow and I watched the whole thing in one night. I thought it was so smart. I thought it was so funny. Every episode was like peeling a, a, an onion of a new character and none of the characters were bad ideas or cliches. No. Everything was smart. So talk to me about what it was like when you got cast in this show. Cause I'm, sh I'm assuming you got cast in the pilot and you didn't really know where it was going to go afterwards. Well, I, well, I'll talk about, well, when I first heard about Glow, it was a friend of mine that he actually was writing a, a wrestling script of his own and his, his, uh, 
agents at the time was like, well, I hope it's not like this and gave it to him. And he literally read it and said, well, there's this role, Cherry, that I think it's you. You need to read this role. So I kind of read it like two months before anyone had it. And I literally told my reps, I was like, I need to go out for this. And when I went out for it, I met Gingy, Liz, and Carly for the first time. I met Jen Houston for the first time. She's a New York casting director and she came out to LA for two weeks. And we literally just had a conversation after I read had a conversation she just wanted to get to know me and then I literally the side said that Cherry does a little a tumble and then she comes up into a jump kick and then she goes freeze MF I don't know if I could say you can, yeah you can oh I can oh good so she says freeze motherfucker so yeah you got the part <laughs> yeah right and um and no one did that in the room. No one showed their physical capabilities. And I was like one of the three. Um, I think it was like three, met, three others, maybe. And I was like, wait a minute. You saw like 300, 400 girls and me and maybe two other girls did that. But I wanted the role so bad that I did it on the hard concrete. And I was like, I just wanted them to see that I, I can be physical. And I, yeah, I was chosen. And I, I couldn't believe it because... My dream to be in this acting community was to do a physical role, and I I wanted to do something physical, and what's more physical than being a wrestler on a, on a on a television show? And we're actually doing our own no, skies. You're saying when you signed up or when you decided that you wanted to become an actor, because you were you were you're, you're an athlete. Yeah, right? I used to run track. Yeah. yeah. So when you signed up to be an actor, you wanted to do action. You wanted I wanted to do, to do act. Stuff. Yes, and I still want to do action. My goal is to be an action hero. Like we don't have an African American action. hero. Hero, and that yeah. is what we're, I'm looking for. Because, yes, you see African-American women, you see maybe one or two films that they do, but you don't see a constant, like, seek, oh, yes, Sidel Noel, we have to use her for this. Like, you know, like The Rock. Rock, he always does action music, movies right. all the time. That's what I want for myself. I want to be in all action movies, preferably with The Rock. That would be nice. Yeah. But, yes, <laughs> yeah, that's what I want. We don't have that. And when I said when I stepped into this business that, I want to do action stuff. And I told my reps that from the beginning. And you know that in this business, you know, sometimes reps trying to um, take you in a different direction. I remember I had my old reps were like, okay, you're, you're too athletic looking. Maybe cut back in the weight room because I like to lift. Yeah, I had reps to tell me that. And I was just like, I owned myself and I walked away. And I just wanted people that actually recognize me for who I am and not take anything from me. So then finally, when I got good reps, they were like, yes, well, let's go in that direction. If that's the direction you want to go, let's do that. And they sent me out on, on things that I wanted to go out for. That's the direction I wanted to go to. And Glow came knocking, and here I am. So you know, you read the pilot. How much did you know about your character going into the pilot shoot? Um, I knew pretty much what they gave me. I knew that she had to be very athletic. I knew in the breakdowns, it literally said, think of Pam Greer as Foxy Brown. And I was like, well, damn, that's me. Hello. <laughs> so I was like, you got her. And they were just like, she's like, she's like the coach. And she's the only level-headed one of them. Like, Sherry's the one that really takes this as a job. So yeah, that's pretty much what I knew. I didn't know where, I did, we didn't know about our wrestling characters until later on. I didn't know it was gonna be Junk Chain. <laughs> I literally thought Cherry Bang was my wrestling name. It wasn't until the second episode when I read and I saw that my husband was Keith Bang and I was like, wait a minute, Bang? I was like, you telling me Cherry Bang is actually her name? And he, they were like, yes, so yeah. Uh, what is the set like with, with, with this whole cast, it's such a big ensemble. These ladies right here, I mean, this is a blessing to have 14 women that you get along with. It's pretty rare. And and I promise you, when I booked the role, I was like, whoa, 14 women. Because I, I, I have like more guy friends than female friends. And I was like, well, which girl is going to show their ass? But nobody, I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you have that. How, I know. I and we know, do show I, asses literally on the show, though. But <laughs> I want to know how you define showing ass. Well, you know, you have some divas. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Who's going to be a diva on the set? But no, none of that. We don't have any of that. Everybody is so supportive. So everybody's so loving. And I mean, we could do a tumble and we have girls cheering for each other. This, th this right here is, doesn't happen. Doesn't happen often. And I'm just so blessed to be with the, a group of women that 
are so different, but yet we could come back together and empower each other on the show, at, in our characters, and off camera. I mean, I sh we, sh we share WhatsApp. Like, I'm literally telling the girls on my WhatsApp and like, I'm about to go into build series. Like, what are you doing? Oh, yeah, I'm cleaning my toilet. Like, that's that's the type of conversations cleaning we have. cleaning the toilet right now? Uh, I think it was Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the conversations that we have. And Is Mark on those? Oh, Mark Mark stays far away from that. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that would be awesome to have Mark on the group chat. But yeah, no. During the first season, Mark always like so we always used to have our group because mostly every day on set we were shot together mm -hmm. and our chairs would be over here so you have all the 14 chairs over here and then some way far <laughs> over there would be mark <laughs> and he would always separate himself but i think that was good for the first season second season he started to interact with us more mm -hmm. and and you'll see even a change in sam's kid in, in in the sam in the character that he plays so yeah the first season he was really trying to separate himself but now he's 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 warming up to the girl he didn't want to be the only guy, so he would separate himself a <laughs> yeah, little bit. Yeah, pretty much. Now, I know you can't say much, but what? how did it feel? What kind of When you saw the storyline that they were going to give you for season two, I don't know what it is, what did that feel like? I, 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 truthfully, I started like crying in the room with them because literally the direction that they had me going, that's what I thought was going to, like, I, I had a prediction and I was like, oh my God, I, this is kind of what I want to be for the first season. And they, um, like, read, our, read my mind. They really are very intuitive when they do stuff like that. They, they really listen to us. And the second season, the stuff that, I, that we're talking about and, and that you will see is stuff that really happened to me and stuff that happened to my friends. So I, I really love that Liz and Carly took the time to like listen and, and really put that stuff out there because you'll see more vulnerability from Cherry this season. First season, you just saw her being a badass and really taking charge. You're gonna see her going to, go, uh, you're gonna see Cherry going through like an emotional roller coaster. Wow. Yeah, yeah. What was that like for you as an actor? It was pretty freeing, almost. Like, I, I want to say it's therapeutic because you have these things that you sometimes don't want to deal with in your, in your personal life, and then all of a sudden you see the same thing written on script and you're supposed to perform, and, and you never had that release in your personal life, but then you get to do, it, do that on film. And it's almost like an inner thing that you do with yourself. But yeah, it was, it, it was almost like a release and therapeutic for me. That's mm -hmm. crazy. So basically, you're telling stories on set. You're talking to your friends, the other actors and actresses, and the writers are just kind of listening to you and oh, writing they stuff have down. yes, they have their Love little moles vibe. On set. Yeah. So the first season, when 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 Jackie goes, um, yo, pass me a tampon, and then then she was like, my cycle's on, and then oh, your your cycle's on, my cycle's on, and then Jackie's like, oh, we're synced, we're linked. Like that happened on the show. Like our <laughs> cycles were linked, and. These writers, they wrote it in. I'm telling you, they have their little spies on set that they literally listen to us and they actually write it into the um, series. I don't remember, but who did you get to give the biggest ass kicking to in last season? Because we can't talk about the, the who it may have been in the new season. But uh, in the last season, do you remember who you got to kind of I can't, uh, beat on a little bit? It was Vicky Viking in the tenth in the last episode. Yeah, yeah we we pretty much. Well, she, she did a, a, a vagina vag. What is it? <laughs> Her vagina was really in my face each take. It was, it was a lot of takes of vagina in my face. But yes. <laughs> and then, How do you handle that as an actor on set when, when, when you have to keep doing that over and over again? You just do it. Like, you can't do any, you can't be like, no, no vagina this time. And like, that's, okay. that's the shot. That's okay. the shot. So you just, you just do, literally when we met, when, when, we, when we met these girls, we had to do four weeks of wrestling training. That's the first time we met. We didn't have, we didn't have like a, a, a read together or we didn't, they didn't introduce us. It was literally, we stepped in and we saw a wrestling ring and then one by one, another person came in and it's like, oh, you're on the show, you're on the show. We're all on the show. That's literally how we met. It's That's like, why you're all so close because yeah. you did wrestling training. Yeah, wrestling yeah. training for like four weeks five days a week, three to four hours a day, and then we continued training during the whole season. So we were, we were training four to five months. And yeah, that's what we do. We're, we your, do our own stuff. What's been your favorite wrestling move to, to learn and, and enact? I love a body slam. I really love a body slam. 
because I really, I look, I will body slam somebody for real. <laughs> I haven't done anything wrong. I don't know why and you're looking that at I me know, like you're going to no, body slam no, just, me. Look, if you <laughs> test me, I might body slam you. No, I, but. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm into new things. Let's Some give people it a are shot. down. Some people are down with that. But no, I really like a body to, to literally take somebody and just, I really like Is the body like slam you pick them up, you throw them, or the body slam is on it, the knee? No, it's literally like you take them up and you pick them up and it's and it's, you're, you're throwing them back down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, yeah. What's the knee one? You know what I'm talking about? Where people pick them up and they like drop someone on their back on their knee. Oh, the that's backbreaker. The, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I knew there was a wrestling fan. <laughs> backbreaker. Yeah. Thank you. I, I know that one. So going into the second season, did you ask for like any new moves that you could do, or what? I always ask for moves. Chavo Guerrero Jr. You know, he he is our wrestling coordinator. I always be like, because I'm now I'm a little wrestling fan. I watch Monday Night Raw. I watch yeah. all that. Yeah, I watch WWE. Your favorite. Um, I don't really have a favorite because literally I'm just I'm like doing homework because I really want to do some of these moves. So I, but I admire all the women. Those women, they like really like put their bodies through hell like they really do it and it's and it's awesome to see and um but I I like I want to do a lot of stuff and then I go to Chavo and I'm like okay I seen this this is what I want to do and then he'll be like mm -mm -mm, that's not the period like we're very very specific we have to keep it in wow. 1985 yeah yeah well I'll be like He's like, we're doing this now. We didn't, do, we didn't do that back then. So you won't catch us doing anything in the 90s. You won't catch us doing anything that's current. It's not current wrestling. It's all period. We really stay in a decade. Now, Cherry is a former uh, black exploitation star or stunt yeah, woman, right? Yeah, she was right? the stunt double for, for Foxy Brand, for Pam oh, Guerrero. Right. Yeah, she was the stunt double. That's yeah. why I was like, <laughs> when I read, when I first read it, I was like, okay, so I started reading, I started watching all the black exploitation movies again, thinking that's what I literally had to do because I was like, I didn't know anything. I just wanted to be so prepared as possible. We even had to do a rap. I had to do a rap doing. <laughs> like, you do a rap? We had to do a rap for our auditions. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. In my rap, I, I went crazy. I, I got like dollar bills and I threw it at the producers. Did they write it or did you have to freestyle? No, they wrote rap? it, they oh, wrote okay. it, the, yeah. Freestyle rap for us. Yeah, but the way they wrote it, like I was like, okay, so if you write this, I literally came in there with my phone and I had my little, my background music for my rap. <laughs> And I did. I was like, okay. And then I had my I had my money because in a sentence, in one of them, it said it like, um, I have so much money or something. And I just and so I literally took it out my back pocket and I threw it in their faces. And I was and they were just like, uh, and I was like, I either just fucked up right now throwing money in their faces. Like, am I bribing them right now? But yeah, I I really all went, singles though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for definitely with singles. And then literally after I was done, it was so funny. After I was done. And, and then I, I I started like slowly like okay picking up my I'm, I'm hi guys can I can I get that dollar back like I was picking up my dollar bills after I threw it at them <laughs> but yeah now at the beginning of this interview I said that uh, it's one of my favorite shows but I'm not alone it's on the cover of Entertainment Weekly I know today. It came out today yeah this is amazing. it's on stands now guys that's awesome the show is a legitimate hit did you guys expect that or feel like you really had something and kind of knew it would be when you were making it. I mean, I didn't know it was going to be a hit. I just knew it was something special because it hasn't been done. Like, when I read the script, there there isn't another wrestling show. Like, right now, we have so many shows that's... You have so many medical dramas. You have the, another detective show. You have so much, like, the same thing, but with a little twist. This was its own. It's It's literally an original. Like, it wasn't done before. And I was just like... It's very original, and I had to be a part of it. So I knew it was special just because it's its, its own thing. Yeah. So, But being a hit, I mean, I was like, I didn't know because... Some people didn't even know that it was a scripted show because when like when we when we did the publicity for it last year, a lot of people were like, "Oh, I just thought it was just wrestling and that was it." But it's really wrestling is just a backdrop. It's more than that. It's literally telling the lives of these women that you wouldn't have come together, and they're empowering each other, and they're build they're building a lives together and a friendship, and you wouldn't. It's not even wrestling. The wrestling is just a small part of it, and 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 a little small part of it. But yeah. It's, I, I don't the, rest, the, the wrestling in the world is a, is, a, is a means to tell the story of like 10 women, which is rarely yeah. done on television. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's get some questions from the audience. Who has a question? Right here. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, how are you? So, huge fan of the first season. 
and I'm also a huge pro wrestling fan. So my first question is, um, has anyone from the WWE reached out to you ladies? Yeah, actually, that's uh, that's the thing. Like, we were we wanted the love from the wrestling community, and we were hoping they would give us the love and not just be like, oh, you're just a bunch of actors trying to wrestle. And when they literally came to us with open arms, they even, like, invite us. We went to, like, some of their matches and and... They were like, yeah, the Glow Girls in the audience, and here we are at a wrestling match, and we're like, oh, yeah, Glow Girls. But, yeah, they welcomed us, and they were like, yo, they really loved the show, and we were we were so excited to hear that. Even some of the old, um, the glow, the original Glow Girls, they reached out, too, and they loved the show. So we were very, like, I couldn't believe that some of these actual wrestlers, like, loved the show. So, yeah, they do. Awesome. Also, um, how did your first bump feel? It was terrifying. <laughs> The thing is, it's literally like the trust factor. So you're literally trusting your own self to fall on your back and not be paralyzed. You're talking about the floor, bumping yeah, on the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So literally, we started off actually sitting. And it was like sitting and then flipping yourself up. And then it, and it slowly got up. And then I literally was just like, uh, uh, And then I just was like, I had to... Because in the first, uh, what was it? First or second? Second episode, I think you literally... I'm teaching the girls to do that. And I'm like... All right, guys. And I literally was just like, oh, gosh, I got to do this again. And I had to do it over and over again. But I just was like, all right, fuck it. I'm just going to just I can't think about it because if I think about it, I'm going to get in that headspace where I'm like afraid. So I just have to go for it. And now Chavo's like, Sidel, this is what you do. And he'll like mimic. And he's like, this is what you do. And I'll be like, OK, and I'll just do it without thinking about it. Because the moment I start thinking, I'll just I'll just terrify myself. But yeah, it was scary at first. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next one. Right here. Hey, great to meet Hi, you. Hi, nice to meet uh, you. You're going to go far. Thank you. Um, yeah, of <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll yeah. take that. <laughs> okay. So um, what's the superhero you like to play in the future? Oh, gosh. Um, I would love to play Storm. Mm. I would. I know Storm's been done, but uh, it hasn't been done the way I want it to be done. But, yeah, I've always wanted to play Storm, and it's, it's still a dream of mine. I don't know if that'll happen, but... Storm's always been my dream. I mean, I dress up like Storm for Halloween all the time. <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully a producer will see that out there somewhere and be like, okay, let's try it again. So, yeah, Storm. Uh, next question. Hey, Sidel. Hey. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, I saw in a recent interview that you said that you had a vision board. Mm -hmm. um, you had a vision board of roles that you wanted to book and see yourself play. Mm -hmm. What were the things in your control that you were able to do to see those visions come through? Okay, yeah. So, yeah, I had a vision board. I, my vision board was, and, and, and the thing is, the thing with vision boards, for me, you have to be very specific. So my vision board wasn't like, oh, I just want to be on TV. I literally said I wanted to be in a Marvel franchise, Black Panther. I literally said I wanted to be a, a series regular on a hit show, Glow. And then I said I wanted to be a recurring character on a major television show on a major network, and that was CW Arrow. So I literally, what I did is I told my reps, this is the direction that I want it to go. And something sometimes as actors, you just want to work so much that you're just like, I'll take anything. I'll take anything, whatever. I just want to work. So I didn't do that. If, I, if there was an audition that I knew I didn't really want, I didn't go on it. And I know that limited me, and that maybe maybe took my um, my where I am now took it a bit longer to get there. But it, it wasn't the direction I wanted to go, so I didn't want to get in that direction and be in that field, and knowing that I wouldn't be happy doing it. So I just let it go and and let it be for somebody else that wanted to do that. So I would just I was always very very specific on where I wanted to go, and I would tell my reps exactly which direction I wanted to do, and then that's. That's pretty much how I got Glow and Black Panther. And I, I always wanted to do alpha, very dynamic, strong female roles. And so that's pretty much all that I went out for. I didn't go out for anything other, but yeah. You're welcome. I think we have time for one more. This question is a little bit different. Some people, and I think including Entertainment Weekly, I got a glimpse of the article, see Glow as a comedy. Others see it as a social commentary. So I'm just curious what your perspective is. Is it either of those? Is it something else again entirely? Um, 
truthfully, I play it as a drama. I play as is because my character, she doesn't really have any punchlines. She really plays the truth of it. And I think that's what makes the comedy. If you just play the truth of it, it'll naturally come out. Like none of us play the gimmick. Like you may have the the biddies, the old biddies that do little things, and that, but that's just Kimmy and Rebecca. They they could they're they're it they're on, and I, that's why they got the job. But I, I I think even I heard Allie last night. She plays it as as a drama as well. We don't really play the gimmick, even though we are considered a half hour comedy. We all I think most of us play it as a drama. We just play the truth in the line. We don't try to force anything to it. Yeah. Well, it's a, if you played it as a gimmick, the show wouldn't oh, work no. because it's already, in its own way, kind of set up in a world that could feel like a gimmick. So yes. if anybody didn't play it realistically, the whole thing would just be, it'd be too much. Yeah, exactly. Because, come on, look at us. We, we're in leotards and we're big hair and eyelashes and just colors everywhere. So, yeah, you can't play that. You just have to be as, as is and just play the truth. Absolutely. Well, I love the show. Congratulations. Congratulations on Black Panther and, and Arrow. And the second season of Glow premieres or comes out on Netflix June 20, 29th. 29th. Yes. Everybody, please give a big round of applause for Sidel Noel. Let's hear it. Thank you. 